Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Spirits of the Elid quest. Now, for this quest, you're going to need the following requirements. So, you need the uh, following levels uh, 33 magic, which can be boosted if you wish to, uh, level 37 range, level 37 mining, level 37 thieving, and the ability to defeat three level 77 golems who are weak against uh, specific attack styles, which I'll go on to uh, in a few minutes. That's it for the requirements, now onto the items. So you're going to need uh, Lore and Air Runes in order to cast the Telegrab spell or Teleconnected Grab, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you'll want two pieces of thread. You will want one weapon for each melee attack style, Stab, Crush and Slash. Now if you're not too sure what weapon to do what with, um, if you're after a Slash weapon you're going to either want to go for sort of a two-handed sword or long sword. For stab style attacks, um, daggers mostly have stabs, you can dual wield daggers um, if you wish to. And in crush, you're looking at weapons like uh, maces and warhammers. So again, uh, like I have done, um, you can dual wield like warhammers or dual wield maces. Completely up to you. But like I said, you need a, a stab style weapon, a crush style weapon and a slash style weapon. You will also want a light source, uh, such as a candle, a bullseye lantern, etc, um, a rope, and you will also want a bow and some arrows, or a crossbow and some bolts. Doesn't really matter which, uh, as long as you bring some form of ranged. You'll also need a series of coins just to uh, travel onto magic carpets, that kind of thing. Um, and also if you're low level it might be handy to bring some food uh, and possibly some prayer potions with you as well. Um, and you can also bring water skins uh, for the desert, however you won't be in the desert too long to take too much damage from it, so that bit's up to you. So that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the quest starting point. So we're currently at Polnaviak. Um, now there's a few ways to get to Polnaviak. Um, the most easiest way I would recommend is you can buy a Polnaviak teleport scroll uh, via the Grand Exchange and then upon reading it it will teleport you to Polnaviak. Um, or if you have a player owned house based in Polnaviak you can teleport to your house and then exit the portal so that will take you to Polnaviak uh, or the other set, uh, quickest way really is to uh, head here from Shantae Pass south of Alcarid's Lodestone now um, if you don't have access to the full Lodestone network I have a guide which can be found in the description below and it's well worth having just to speed up quests but either way um, you want to get to Polnaviak and then from here we're going to head to the magic carpet um, to the south of us and then when we um, click to travel we can then choose the option to go to Nardar and that is where the quest start point is located so you want to travel to Nardar via the magic carpet once you arrive in Nardar you want to head to the sort of biggest uh, house to the uh, eastern side of the town and you want to look for our uh, Arusar the mayor um, speaking to him he will tell you that there is a curse on the town and there is no more water available to the people anymore once you finish speaking to him, uh, you want to go to the house, which is just north of the mayor's house, and you want to speak to Gastlord the Elder, and he will give you a ballad. The ballad tells you about a man's journey to the source of water for Nardar, similar to your quest. It speaks about an ancestral key used by the priestess, which was used to open a great stone door, um, through which appear three great men, all made of rock, and three small chambers they did block, and it also speaks about the man's failed attempt to kill them. So you want to go to the shrine which is just north of the dried up, uh, dried up fountain and it's also west of Gaslord the Elder's house. Um, you want to speak to the guy inside here um, while you're in and then you'll then notice there's an ancestral key which is um, in an enclosed area on the east side of the museum. You want to use your teleconnected grab spell um, to grab the key from the um, area. And once you have that in your inventory you didn't want to search the cupboards nearby you'll notice there's um, two different cupboards to the north and south of the western wall uh, search both of them to be given a top and bottom uh, you then want to use your thread on the robes to repair them and it will turn them into the robes of Elodinus you can also attach your ancestral key to your steel key ring if you've completed one small favour quest so now we have these items we need to head to the water ravine dungeon and the quickest way to get there is by heading to Shantae Pass um, so you want to return to Shantae Pass either by teleporting back to Polnaviak and getting a magic carpet there or teleport to Alcarid's Lodestone and then head south to Shantae Pass either way um, I'll speak to you once you've returned there once you arrive at Shanty Bar, you want to start heading to where the Dominion Tower is. Um, you'll notice as you'll cross a river. What you want to do is sort of go around the eastern side of Dominion Tower until you're on the northern side, and you should see a waterfall, which is where the source of the river is. Um, 
when you reach the entrance of the water ravine dungeon click on the waterfall to climb it and uh, once you're in inside the dungeon you'll find yourself before a locked door uh, while you're wearing the robes of Ellen Dinner, so make sure you've got them on now um, unlock the door with the ancestral key once you're inside you'll see three doors to the, each, uh, to the east and they are each guarded by a level 77 golem that is weak against a certain attack type and will be immune to all others. Um, you need to defeat each one of them and then solve the puzzle behind the door to clear the water channels. So I'm going to speed up this footage here and um, I will just talk you through each golem and the um, room that it guards. So the white golem is found in the south room and it's weak against stabbing attacks and will appear when you try to enter the door. Uh, you want to obviously kill it with your stabbing style weapons. Um, Overall, the golems aren't really that strong to be honest, they've just got quite high defence. Um, so obviously you just want to deal as much damage to them as you can, um, while obviously observing your health. But to be honest, as long as you're using the correct uh, attack style, you shouldn't really have too much difficulty against them all. Um, and obviously you can use Protect from Melee if you have the prayer to do so, to help protect from some of their damage as well. But anyways, once you call a killed white golem, uh, you can enter the water channel and clear the um, room with thieving, and there'll be an option to obviously do that. Uh, in the eastern room is the grey golem, which is weak against slashing style attacks. Um, again, he will appear as you try to open the east door, and then once that one is dead as well, you want to clear the water channel by using your pickaxe, as uh, so that's obviously what you need your mining for. And then the black golem is in the northeast room and is weak against crush attacks and uh, lurks behind the northeast door. Um, once you've killed Dan into that room, once you're inside, you'll see a little target on the other side of the water channel. You want to equip your bow and arrow or crossbow and bolts and shoot it down. And once you've destroyed it, the channel will be cleared. So, like I said, you've got to kill all three golems and um, solve all three uh, puzzles to clear the water channels. Um, like I said, I don't really think you'll have too much trouble against the golems, but if you find yourself getting particularly stuck, leave a comment in the comment section below and I shall try and uh, help you or give you some tips on how to uh, get through that. Um, but after you clear all three channels, the northern door will open. You want to go through this door and walk right around the lake and talk to one of the spirits. Um, they will speak as if their minds were one and telling you to recover the sacred statue of Elodinus and return it to the shrine in Nardar to break the curse. So we now need to return to Nardar and speak to the mayor once again. Um, so you want to get there however you did in the f uh, first place and I'll speak to you again in a few moments. So once you're back in Nardar in the mayor's house, speak to him and you'll ask about the statue and he'll tell you that they threw the statue down a crevice west of the town. Um, before leaving you'll notice there's a red dot on the floor which is the mayor's shoes and they're beside the entrance door of his house. Um, pick them up and you want to use a knife on them to create two souls. Um, you must do this outside his house though otherwise he'll try and stop you. Um, you're probably wondering why you're doing this, you'll, it'll make sense in a few minutes. Um, so what you want to do is go west from the general store in Nardar until you come up to a large crevice um, you'll need a light source to enter it otherwise you'll be eaten alive by tiny bugs uh, and the way to access the crevice is by using your rope on it. Um, once you're done that you'll enter a cave full of snakes with a door to the north. Walk through the door and you'll see a genie. Uh, talk to him and he'll tell you to get, give him the mayor's soul in exchange for the statue. Now the little trick here, he's asked for a soul, thinking, oh, soul is in bodies uh, uh, or inside humans, however we're going to give him the soul of a shoe, so hopefully that made sense to you now. Um, anyway, you should have them in your inventory, so pass one of the shoe souls to the genie in exchange for the statue. You want to then climb back out of the crevice and then head um, back to the town of Nardar. Once you're back in Nardar, go in the building just north of the city's fountain where we found the ancestral key and you want to use the statue of Elodinus on the statue plinth um, to recreate the shrine and as soon as you do that it will come up congratulations you have completed the spirit of the Elid quest. You are awarded 2 quest points, 8000 prayer experience, 1000 thieving and magic experience, access to Nardar's fountain and shrine, praying at the statue will fill your life points, temporarily boost it and restore your prayer points, you will get the robes of Elodinus, two treasure hunter keys and two hearts of ice. So yeah, overall pretty easy quest, not too hard at all and it's quite a quick one as well. Um, also the prayer experience um, is quite a good reward from this as well as the thieving and magic and also um, having that statue to pray at, restoring your life points and uh, prayer points is actually quite handy especially if you're in the desert taking a lot of damage from the desert heat. I don't think you'll run into any problems following this guide, uh, however if you do get stuck at all, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching. 
please make sure you like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.